It is a commonly accepted truth that the ocean is a dangerous place. The water can be cold and unforgiving, even in a tropical paradise, and if you fall overboard in open water, your chances of survival aren't all that great. Even the strongest swimmer can get dragged away and pulled beneath the waves, particularly during stormy weather. But not every disappearance or death on the ocean is simply caused by the ocean. Sometimes the ocean gets a little help from someone else first. My name is Brianne, and I'm the host and creator of Among the Dirt and Trees, a show where we explore true crime cases that occur out in nature. In this episode, we're going to discuss a famed historical disappearance, the disappearance of Theodosia Burr Alston, the daughter of our third vice president, Aaron Burr. So I mentioned in the last episode that this episode was going to be a little different. In honor of my 29th birthday, we will be discussing what happened to Theodosia, a young woman who vanished on a ship under mysterious circumstances at the age of, you guessed it, 29. So hopefully I don't disappear this year or else this episode is going to age either poorly or beautifully to be determined. But if there is something that you should know about me, it is that I am a huge Hamilton fan. I mean, who isn't, right? But seriously, I love the show. I love the songs. I love the writing. I just love it. So you can imagine how my mind basically exploded when I learned that dear Theodosia actually disappeared at sea after Burr's life took a seriously dark turn. For this episode, I'm going to stray away from my usual formatting a little bit and make this one a little less formal. When someone goes missing, it's without a doubt a tragedy, but given the fact that this case is more of a matter of historical record than personal tragedy at this point, I'm open to being a little bit more relaxed about this one. It helps that there are so many interesting rumors surrounding her disappearance, too. For those of you who don't know, Aaron Burr was the man who killed Alexander Hamilton. The two of them got together for a duel after some nasty letter exchanges, and ultimately, Burr killed Hamilton in 1804. This was a notoriously unpopular decision on his end. (laughs) Even though Hamilton was known for getting under everyone's skin, his followers really did adore him and a lot of people respected him. Burr was wanted for his murder, and his political history really just gets worse from there. When it became apparent that Burr was wanted for murder, he decided to flee. And, of course, where would he flee to but to his daughter Theodosia in South Carolina? At this point, everything kind of goes from bad to worse for this family. Theodosia loved her father, but he tarnished the family reputation with this murder. It wasn't that Burr was the first or the only man to duel it out in New Jersey, but He was a famous politician, and Hamilton was a famous politician too. People were pretty mad about it all, and their anger was directed at the Burr family. And then, because everything wasn't already crazy enough, Aaron Burr found a way to make it worse. For Burr, being vice president wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. From what I can tell, this was largely because Thomas Jefferson, the president at the time, wasn't exactly a fan of him, so Burr didn't get to play much of a role in his own vice presidency. His solution was, apparently, to make a plan to take over some parts of Mexico and basically make himself emperor, (laughs) with his daughter, Theodosia, set to take the position after him. Now, Obviously, this plan was crazy, um, but I did appreciate how forward-thinking he was where he just assumed that Theodosia would be the perfect fit for the throne. There was no casual sexism in this call, which I did think was pretty cool. But um, America, having just committed treason to break up with England, was shockingly against treason by their own. (laughs) So Burr was charged with treason, and even though the charges were dropped, he was now hated even more in the country and ultimately opted to exile himself back to England. Now, back to Theodosia. See, 
she loved her father, and he loved her. She supported his every effort and petitioned to bring him back safe and sound. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out that way. By 1812, Aaron Burr was back in New York, but things weren't going well for the family and they were not going well for Theodosia. She had just lost her son, she was suffering from severe depression, and she was physically ill and had been for the majority of her life as well. So, with all of this suffering going on, she decided to go to New York to be with her father, and to get there, she got on a boat. The boat that Theodosia boarded was called the Patriot, which is a little funny given the whole treason concern. But this boat would be the last confirmed location of Theodosia, and this is where all of the wild conspiracy theories come out. The Patriot never officially made it to its destination, and Theodosia disappeared with that boat. The question here is, what happened? One theory surrounds the duel with Hamilton. Some people believe that Theodosia was getting on this boat and somebody knew that she would be there. They knew she'd be aboard the boat and ultimately they decided to seek their own revenge against Aaron Burr by taking away the person that he loved most, his daughter. Personally, I wasn't completely sold on this theory because eight years had already passed, but the more I thought about it, the more plausible it actually seemed. Maybe it just was the right opportunity to get her more or less alone, or maybe the potential killers were biding their time to make it look like it wasn't related to Hamilton's death. It could even have just been a crime of opportunity kind of thing. A lot of people were mad, so I'm not crossing this out as an option yet. And in line with the Revenge for Hamilton theory, there is the potential that it wasn't just about Hamilton, but rather about the treason bit. Maybe Theodosia was abducted or killed to get back at Burr for betraying America in so many ways. For all we know, her disappearance was an elaborate ploy. Maybe making her disappear forever on a ship called the Patriot was meant to be a final stab at Aaron Burr. I would definitely watch that movie, because, you know, plot twist, but... <laughs> It just seems possible that given all of the ire people felt towards the Burr family, somebody could have just kind of handled it. <laughs> now, there is another highly plausible crime option that we wouldn't really consider true crime today, but definitely was back in 1812. Piracy. A significant amount of people who have studied the disappearance believe that Theodosia, the ship, and its crew were all victims of pirates. And there are even some confessions to support this. When we think of pirates, a lot of us think of these seafaring adventurers. But that really wasn't the case. Pirates were mostly bad news, and they were opportunists too. For all we know, the boat was attacked by pirates that had no idea who Theodosia even was, and why would they? She'd just kind of be a score for them because she was a noblewoman and likely had some pretty expensive stuff on her. At this point in time, pirates were a pretty big concern. They were actively poaching the waters and were known for killing everyone aboard a ship before laying claim to their treasures. Some reports claim that pirates overtook the ship and that Theodosia even walked the plank, Bible in hand. While this certainly paints an interesting image, the reality is that it just doesn't quite fit. And Aaron Burr didn't buy it either. Even though the image of her walking bravely across the plank in a white dress with a Bible sounds, you know, very movie-esque, Theodosia was also distinctly not religious, which was a fairly bold statement at the time, you know, not something that you'd probably want to be too vocal about, but she was, the family was, so 
when they said that she walked the plank clutching a Bible, Aaron Burr was just kind of like, hmm, probably not. Still, the pirate theory seems highly plausible. It would explain why the ship never showed up, because pirates wouldn't just kill the crew, they would also sink the ship when they were done. In fact, some pirates were more clever than that. Historically, I learned that there were two uses for the term wreckers at that point in time. One was a real and legal job where you went out and salvaged what was left of ships that had wrecked. The other refers to pirate wreckers, which rumors claimed were pirates that would intentionally crash ships in order to loot them. Some even say that these pirates would leave out lights on the beach on stormy nights to trick captains into thinking that there was a safe place to dock for the night, when in reality, there were dangerous rocks and all kinds of things to leave the ship at the mercy of pirates. Apparently, these were more likely a matter of lore than actual truth, but I thought it was a pretty interesting idea. Even though it was never confirmed that the Patriot managed to reach land, some rumors suggest that it did. There are a lot of stories about Theodosia shipping up with pirate captains and leaders of local tribes and all kinds of just daring tales. While they're all certainly Hollywood worthy, it seems pretty unlikely, except for a couple of the theories. One theory involved claims that Theodosia and her doctor, the man that she had been traveling with for her own safety, were seen on shore after the fact. So, with these sightings, that's that's pretty interesting. Did Theodosia secretly go into hiding to flee from the stress of a complicated life? Was she secretly in love with her doctor and they were running off in a kind of like romantic, you know, flee and fake your death kind of situation? Considering how sick she was, most agree that this is pretty unlikely. But at the same time, if uh, she was running off with her doctor and he's the one confirming that she's sick, you know, could be a pretty solid plan, all things considered. It sure would make for an interesting twist, if nothing else. And considering her father wanted to become emperor of his own land... Thinking big seems like it kind of runs in the Burr family. Aaron Burr raised Theodosia like he would have a son, and she was known to be exceptionally clever, according to everyone who knew her. So maybe she did. Maybe she decided to start a new life free of the Burr legacy because she knew that she could make it on her own. Whether the stormy seas claimed her ship she ran off with a trusted friend, or she secretly became a pirate queen, I think we can all agree that this story is pretty strange just because of how big of a deal Theodosia was. The waves of the ocean may know the only truth to this tale, but there's no denying that hundreds of years later, historians and true crime podcasters alike are still asking what happened to Theodosia Burr Alston. I hope that you guys enjoyed diving into this with me and a little bit of my fangirling. And I hope that every single one of you has watched Hamilton and knows just how much of a sucker punch it was to realize that Theodosia disappeared like this. Uh, On a personal note, I firmly believe that the creator of Hamilton, Lin-Manuel Miranda, is the creative genius of our time. So if you haven't checked out his work and you want to just be emotionally destroyed, get on it. In addition to that, I would love to know how you feel about this slightly less formal and more rumor-based style of episode, because I would love to do more like it down the line with some other historical moments and some bits of lore. So to let me know what you think, you can contact me on Instagram or Twitter with the tag at datpod. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.